welcome to another DC today and uh, another day of some downside volatility in the market. I'm going to just kind of quickly cover the basics and uh, let you go on your way. I um, first, just by way of summary here, the Dow was down 350 points and it was pretty much steadily down all throughout the day. It, it started um, up a tad bit went negative, and then just slowly but surely throughout the day. In the final um, hour, I think it did get close. I'm not sure if it hit down 500 or not, but we were doing some uh, tethering of client cash down 480-ish. So it was very close to down 500, and then it closed down 350. So you got a 150, 130-point uh, bounce at the very end. Down 1%. S&P was down close to 1.5%. The NASDAQ was down exactly 2%. So it was, again, kind of on a down day of 2022, this was a more normal down day where all three indices were down. Dow down the least, NASDAQ down the most. You know the deal. Now, the part that has been unique with this recent market uh, sell-off relative to the rally that we have been in for the last couple months is uh, that today... Um, and this has been the case now for a full month. The bond market is in quite a rally. And so today the 10 year was down um, six and a half basis points. Uh, the 10 year yield is down to three and a half percent. So again, the price movement higher, the rally up in uh, treasury bonds has been, been pretty significant uh, for about a month now. As a matter of fact, I think today is December 7th. It might be the 6th. Yeah, it's the six. Um, it started on November 7th. So so we've really seen quite a rally here since uh, the last month. Utilities were up on the day today. That was the only sector that was up. It doesn't get much more defensive in theory than the utility sector. And so you had one defensive sector that was up on the day. And then let me look. Um, the consumer staples were second best and healthcare was third best. Real estate was fourth best. Those other three were all down. Um, anywhere from 68 to 78 basis points. But again, the defensives were the leaders and then the cyclicals, energy, communication, you know, energy was down two and a half percent. Communication was down two and a half percent. Technology was down over 2%. Consumer discretionary, which got pummeled yesterday, was down another 1.6. So again, you see um, the priority in market being on the defensives and cyclicals taking on the most downside. Crude oil was down 3.3%. It's back down to $74.34 a barrel. Um, that's a remarkable drop in crude prices. And um, yet, you know, people are asking, how come oil stocks have done so well with this oil turned down? And I think that that is a very fair question, and it really does speak to a market dynamic, I just want to quickly explain, and that is the concept of future expectations. I think you could argue that strategic petroleum reserves being used so much with, with guarantees for replenishment basically tells the market, okay, in the here and now, oil prices have come down. You have a bit of increase in supply, um, and yet the market is well aware that there is that future business coming. And whether it's Putin, whether it's the overall dynamic in Europe, um, the way in which OPEC Plus is positioning things, the changing dynamic between OPEC producers and Asia, particularly China, versus the reliance on the US, I think that the market, does, uh, in the way they're pricing energy stocks, does seem to believe that um, there will continue to be a favorable environment for that sector, uh, even as we sit here right now with $75 oil. Gas prices, by the way, when you talk about the gas you put in your car, um, this is just remarkable that uh, gas prices are basically now very close to flat on the year. Something in the range of 350 ish a gallon at the beginning of the year, it got all the way up to close to six a gallon and then down to uh, 350 again. It's not quite full circle, but getting there. Um, I'm going to use that to also kind of tap into the inflation story. A couple tidbits that are on my mind. Um, first of all, I've been pretty public about the fact that I believe the supply chain and various supply related issues, which incorporate labor shortages, were the primary cause 
of price escalations in 2021 and 22. And to the extent that you may believe I'm right about that, the supply chain pressure uh, index has dropped substantially. The Richmond Fed Manufacturing Survey that measures vendor lead time has dropped significantly. Um, manufacturing delivery times are way down. Shipping costs are way down, basically almost back to pre-COVID levels after mountaining up higher and then now coming down the other side. So there's a number of supply chain metrics we follow that are all substantially improving. Now you look at that wage inflation that we talked about from the Friday dividend, uh, excuse me, the Friday uh, employment report, 5.1%. And then there is this heavy belief in this thing called a wage uh, inflation spiral. I don't believe in it. Um, but look, the element, the channel through which higher wages can raise inflation is certainly uh, likely to be in the services X energy and X shelter for that matter. I don't think people get a 5% increase and then say, I want to go out and get higher rent. Um, and yet the major components to CPI with goods, which are uh, headed, are disinflating, even through rising wages all year, really since, you know, much earlier in the year, food and energy is much um, uh, uh, separated from, from wage levels. And then the shelter side, which I have argued for a lot of reasons, many rate sensitive and many uh, valuation oriented, that shelter's coming down. So I just don't believe that we're looking at price inflation through wages. Um, all right, there's more I could say on the inflation side, but I, I, I'm going too long as it is. So bottom line, um, in terms of the day, uh, let me pull up my notes here again. Ba, ba, ba. What did I do with them? Here they are. What else did I want to go through? The economic data, the business roundtable CEO outlook survey. Um, it's at its lowest number since the third quarter of 2020. I was surprised by that because it was still well into expansion territory. So it's way above expectations for break even, um, but nevertheless, the grimmer relative outlook compared to how CEOs felt about business conditions and economic conditions a year ago or, or a year and a half ago, definitely on the downtick. Trade deficit came at 78 billion in October. That was quite a bit less than the 80 billion expected. Um, you know, when you're talking about 2 billion on trade deficit, that's a big movement relative to expectations. But I would just look to the total trade number imports plus exports for the United States, and it's up 13.7% versus a year ago. You know, that container ship debacle is largely subsided, uh, but I still think you're dealing with Russia sanction, Russia tension issues on the margin, and then certainly less on the margin, more substantive continues to be China COVID policies. Yesterday's big sell-off, the eight, what the downside breadth, the uh, decline to advance ratio was eight to one. So you know nothing we haven't seen fifty other times this year, but pretty substantial. Um, and we'll watch the Georgia election tonight again. I don't, I don't think that um, it's very likely that there'll be a surprise, but you know, until it gets called, there could be, but I expect a 51, 49 Democrat Senate after tonight. That's all I got. I'll leave it there. Um, I think President Biden's announcement with tie on semiconductor in Arizona today, more chip manufacturing in the States. I think it's a big deal. I was on Varney talking about this morning. I think it's not at all a surprise they want to do it in Arizona versus certain other potential cities and States. And yet, um, you know, I, I don't believe the CHIPS Act was a good piece of legislation. I think it's largely corporate welfare, but that's a lot of money that I don't think Taiwan Semiconductor would be spending in the States without it. And you see, you know, the CEO of Apple, CEO of NVIDIA are on site today. They're customers of what the semiconductor uh, manufacturing will be out of, out of this new plant. So uh, it's probably um, a net positive thing in certain categories that one may be looking at it. I got to leave it there. Um, we'll be back to you tomorrow with another DC Today. Clients, you got your portfolio report coming bright and early tomorrow. Reach out to us at questions at the Bonson Anytime. Thanks for listening to and watching the DC Today.